um, we are learning how to activate the multiple cores in your machine so that you can take a program and slice it in such a way that you can do parts of it in parallel, which can dramatically reduce the amount of time it takes to finish. And as you might imagine, that's a pretty valuable trick to know. Now, in order to be able to measure how much faster the program is running, we need to first agree how do we measure how long it takes for a particular method or a program to run. And so I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do that. And then after we've done that, then we can decide, is this streams thing actually working? How many cores are being activated? Uh, what kind of time savings are we getting? But before we can do any of that, we need to first figure out how do we measure how long it takes for a procedure to run. So let's look at a couple of things. First, I want to tell you that there is this thing called the Java Microbench Harness, which is a professional programmer's package. And I don't know if you have to pay for this or if it's free. I suspect you have to pay for it. And this is a piece of software that will allow you to benchmark how long your procedures take. And the reason why this is good is because it will run it multiple times, take the average, right? Because if you just measure once to see how long a method takes, why might that not be consistent with the next time you run the exact same program on the exact same computer? Why might you get different results? Like if I was to run a program on here and measure how long it takes to run, and then an hour later I did it again, why might I get a different answer? Mr. Nikita, when I run a program here, does the computer's focus sit there and just run that particular program? What else does it do? Okay, it puts it in the scheduler, yes. And what else does the scheduler do? Okay, it's running dozens of other programs. So it like puts yours to sleep for a while, runs another one. And if you, if you just happen to run the program at a time when the computer is exceptionally busy, you're gonna get a result that's much longer than if you run it when the scheduler has fewer things on the table. And so package like this, is useful because it'll run it like 10, 20 times, take the average, maybe throw out the really bad ones, whatever, all that stuff it does for you. Having said that, we're not doing any of that today because it's just too complicated. We're just going to do it the fast, easy way and hope for the best. Okay. But I want to at least let you know that this benchmark harness exists. And here are some uh, example commands you use with it here, this benchmark mode and output time unit. These are all things that you use in combination with this Java micro benchmark harness, which is called the JMH package. So just want to make you aware of that, but we're not using that today. Okay, so what are we doing? What we're going to do is I'm going to start a brand new project here and I'm going to ask you to do the same. And I'm going to show you two or three different ways to measure how long something takes on the computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a method up here. Let's say it's going to increment n 10 million times. Now, I learned something this uh, yesterday while I was playing around with this. You notice that when you have a number like this, you see how it's hard to count the zeros, right? You see it's hard to count the zeros. Java gives you the option of putting underscores wherever you like in a number like this to make it easier to count the zeros. So that's kind of cool. You can't use commas because commas mean something else in Java and you can't use decimal points because that obviously means something else also but you can use these underscores to make it easier to read. So that's kind of cool. And you can use these in decimal numbers also. You can't just put it before or after the decimal, but anywhere else you can put in there these underscores to help break up the fields to make it easier to know how many decimal places there are, et cetera. So I'm gonna run this 10 million times and I'm gonna just increase n. I'm not gonna do very much and this method does not return anything. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna call this do stuff method and my question is, how long does it take for this method to run? That's the question we're trying to answer today. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what time it is before I run this. I'm going to run this. Then I'm going to figure out what time it is after I run this. And I'm just going to subtract the two times from one another. And that will tell me how much time elapsed to run this method. That's the idea. So one way we can do that is we can use this thing here. But we can do this, use this thing called instant. And we can basically, you see it, it, it takes a measurement called instant now. It figures out what time it is. And then you, you run your thing. And then it takes another me measurement called instant, which we're going to call after. And then we're going to calculate the duration that took place before and after. And we're going to convert that to milliseconds and print it. 
And what that will do is it will tell us how long it took for that program to run. So let's try and do that now. Say instant before equals instant dot now. Okay, so that's going to now over here. It should give me the option of Java time instant. Yeah, so I just hit alternate and enter and it'll do an automatic import on that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another snapshot of the instant after I've run the procedure. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the difference between those two instants. Like that. All right. And now I'm going to print the duration. And this means milliseconds. So I'm converting the duration to milliseconds here. And I'm printing how long it took. Now, just discuss with your partner, what does your gut tell you? I'm going to run this loop 10 million times. 10, that's a big number. How many milliseconds do you think that'll take? Discuss with your partner, just a rough guess. Seat of the pants. I know you've never done anything like this before. How long do you think it takes my computer, which, by the way, I've been complaining to you, is unbelievably slow compared to the computers in the lab, right? How long do you think it'll take to run this little loop here 10 million times? See that? It takes a millisecond. Now, believe it or not, most of that millisecond is not consumed by the loop. A lot of it is just setting up the program and getting everything else done. I'm going to change this 10 million to 20 million, and we're going to run this again. And you can see it goes up a little bit. But it turns out that if I change this to 90 million, you see it doesn't go up to 9 milliseconds. You see that, right? So it, it's got some variation. Some of it is just getting the basics running before and after. It just takes up some time. It, this is going to make it difficult for us to measure because we're measuring that's just barely noticeable to the computer. So instead of doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to intentionally insert a delay in here, which will be much easier to measure. So I'm going to put in a thread sleep in here, and I'll put in here 250 milliseconds of delay. And now we should be able to measure this much more easily. So let's run it again. Okay. And now you can see I have a measurement of 258 milliseconds. This procedure probably took uh, 250, and then there was some time getting in and out of the scheduler, and then, of course, the time it took for the main to run. So the whole thing took about 258. If I run this again, you'll see I'll get a number close to that, but it won't be exactly the same usually. You can see right here it came out to 264. So you get a rough idea of what's going on now when you use this duration to calculate how long it takes for something to run. So now that we have that behind us, I want to just mention to you that there are a couple of other ways to do this. I already mentioned to you you can use that micro harness to measure the time. There's a couple of other things that can be done here. Uh, let me just point them out to you because instant is not the only way of doing it. There is a relatively new method introduced in Java called uh, NanoTime. And NanoTime can also be used. I'm going to turn this off for a second like that. And now I'm going to take a measurement afterwards, just doing exactly the same thing. OK, and then what I'm going to do is instead of doing duration here, I'm just going to go T2 minus T1. And I think I have to divide that by some number. I think it's I think I have it right. Let me just try it. Let's run this again and see if we got this right. Yeah. So that's another way to do it. It doesn't really matter which way you want to do it. I'll just stick with this for the rest of today because it's just as easy as anything else.